there cosmic warriors and welcome back to another video and if you are new here my name is hannah i am a western practical astrologer okay so in today's video we are going to be exploring the conjunction aspect in astrology we're going to be taking a look at natal and transit conjunctions and also conjunctions in synastry stay tuned because we are going to get into it but before we do make sure to subscribe hit the like button and click the bell and if you are interested in booking a reading with me then you can visit my website hannahselsworth.com there you can also find my practical astrology ebooks guide merch cheat sheets all that good stuff all the links to these products will be in the description box down below and if you want a new video early ad free head on over to my Patreon. You will also receive PDF guides and daily forecasts. I also want to say thank you so, so much to my patrons over there for all of your support. As always, I hope you find this video to be helpful. Let's do this. First things first make sure that you watch the aspects in astrology video for more information about aspects but just as a recap conjunctions are viewed as dynamic powerful and strong they are said to be much stronger than the other aspects and if you have planets conjunct by the minute who oh, this is particularly particularly powerful, notable, worth paying attention to. Conjunctions in general point to beginnings and endings in the chart. They are rather impactful, influential. There is something highly unifying, merging and combining about conjunctions in your chart. Imagine it like this. You are baking a cake and you need a few different ingredients. A conjunction is sort of like beating the butter and sugar together, creating this peel, this fluffy texture. If two planets in your chart are the same degree in a conjunction, this is like the two planets coming as a package date, as if those two ingredients are being merged. They're coming together. They're combining together. You can't have one without the other. Both energies of the planets are blended in this cake mix, <laughs> in this cosmic soup. So if, for example, Venus and Moon are the same degree in your chart, in the same sign, they work together. Relating to others is an emotional need of yours if you have this aspect, but you also must feel comfortable to relate, right? Relationships can also take some time for you in that you need to feel secure, you need to feel safe. Naturally, this can also depend on the sign Venus and Moon are in in your chart. So say they are in Aries, right? You might be somewhat more direct, more open with lovers and friends about your emotional needs. But if Venus and Moon are conjunct in Scorpio, Oh, this is a much different energy. You might not be as quick to be vulnerable and open. Trust and intimacy are to be established. Visualize the conjunction as if two planets are linked together. They are embracing, holding each other, uniting. They are syncing up. However, there can also be some challenges with conjunctions. For example, the planets can be too consumed by one another, engulfed by each other's influence. There's no privacy. There's no space. And there's no escaping the other planet. You feel smothered by its presence. So let's say for instance, Mars and Saturn are conjunct in your chart. How they work together is that you're disciplined and you're controlled whenever you take action. 
You can be highly determined and ambitious. You have this passion and this eagerness, this drive within you to achieve your goals. But at the same time, it can feel like your drive is limited, as if there's only so much fuel in the tank, so much energy you have in you to push through. You might experience hardships, setbacks, times whenever you question why you're even doing things in the first place. You may feel like giving up. And the smothering part of this is that you can experience moments when it feels like Saturn is forcing Mars to slow down and be cautious. But then there are times when it feels like Mars is forcing Saturn to push, push, push. But even when Saturn is trying to have this say over Mars, Mars gets angry and defensive. But when Mars tries to have its say over Saturn, Saturn turn, turns super authoritative and controlling. <laughs> Therefore, this is about recognizing the battle of wills between the planets in conjunction. But it's also about how to make the energies work best together, seeing this team-like quality in the conjunction, how they can share so you can get the best possible result from the energy based on your intentions. Still, there are a couple of other things we must consider when exploring conjunctions. So these things would be the likes of whether you have a day versus a night chart, right? So we're looking at sect. We're also thinking about orbs and planetary dignities. So do you have a day or night chart, which I have talked about in previous videos. Typically, if your sun is above the horizon, then you're gonna have a day chart. But if it's below the horizon, you're gonna have a night chart, typically speaking. So if you have a day chart, this would mean that the sun is your luminary and then Jupiter would be your benefic and Saturn would be your malefic. But if you have a night chart, this means that the moon is your, lum your luminary, then Venus would be your benefic and Mars would be your malefic. But because Mars is on the opposite team, for those of you who have a day chart, this means that Mars would create greater challenge for you if you have a day chart. And then because Saturn is on the opposite team, for those of you who have a night chart, this would mean that Saturn, Saturn would create greater challenge for you. So all of this is to say that when it comes to the conjunction, so thinking about their power and their strength and so on, do think about whether you have a day versus a night chart. So for example, if you have a day chart, Venus conjunct Jupiter is going to be much more rewarding for you when compared to having Mars conjunct Pluto or Saturn. Or if you have a night chart, then having Venus conjunct Moon, that may be much more rewarding for you when compared to having Saturn conjunct the Sun. Okay, so orbs. Let's go over orbs as a reminder here. Orbs essentially show the margin of influence between planets. They show their power, their strength and significance in your chart. So for example, if Mercury and Venus are the same degree in your chart, this makes for a powerful influence. These planets then work as a team. But if they're three degrees apart, meaning a three degree orb, this would still be very strong. But if they're 10 degrees apart, okay, meaning a 10 degree orb, this would be somewhat significant, but not as significant, you know, as having a three degree orb. But anything over that though, the energy between the planets won't be as influential. The planets could still be conjunct by sign, but not by degree. So this is also why it's important to look at degrees, to watch the degree uh, degrees in astrology video that I made. The strength of the orb also depends on the planets involved. So for example, if Saturn and Uranus are five degrees apart, this would not be as strong as Moon and Mars five degrees apart. This is because Moon and Mars, they have much closer orbits to the Sun and the orbits are also a lot faster. The type of aspect also matters. So 
major aspects have larger orbs than minor aspects. And if we are working with the personal planets, the orbs are going to be a bit bigger. So looking at the Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus and Mars, but then the orbs are going to be smaller when it comes to the outer planets. So thinking about Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. Of course, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto are generational planets, so the orbs are going to be smaller. Why do orbs matter though when it comes to conjunctions in your charts? Because, well, they help us see the strength, right? They help us when it comes to the power of the conjunction. A same degree conjunction is going to be very powerful and dynamic, but a conjunction with a five degree orb, it's still going to be strong, <laughs> but not as influential. Now, this is also where planetary dignities come into play. They can help us out when exploring the strength of the planets. For example, you could have Jupiter conjunct Mercury in your chart in the sign of Sagittarius. This would mean that Jupiter is in domicile in Sagittarius, it's home in the sign of Sagittarius, but Mercury on the other hand, it's in detriment. It's in a sort of weaker position than Jupiter. Jupiter is thriving <laughs> in Sagittarius whilst Mercury is thinking, how did I get here? <laughs> I feel slightly out of place. <laughs> Keep in mind that Mercury is in the opposite sign from which it rules. And so in the case of this type of conjunction, perhaps Jupiter is in a much stronger position than Mercury. Maybe Jupiter can help Mercury out a little, <laughs> give Mercury some friendly inspiration. However, Mercury must be careful not to let Jupiter engulf its analysis and research. Someone with both Mercury and Jupiter in Sagittarius in a tight conjunction um, may go too far with things. Oversharing is likely. Talking over others extensively is also likely. Seeing the details and facts within situations is not uh, their strong suit. <laughs> But this is also someone who sees the bigger picture and is highly philosophical. They are generous when it comes to delivering information. They can be, be great teachers and educators. They can form bigger connections in their minds and then communicate what they find. Plus, like I said, it's good to remember having a day versus a night chart. So let's say this person has a day chart, right? So the sun is in the 10th house as an example. Well, like I was saying earlier, Jupiter would be the benefic. So someone with Jupiter in this position, well, this can suggest that Jupiter could be very rewarding for them. But the slight disadvantage they have, which they can very well, they can very well work on, within reason, of course, <laughs> is that they can jump all over the place when sharing their findings and thoughts. For others, it might be difficult to keep up and they might not truly really reach a level of understanding, even though they're, they're seeking a level of understanding. Indeed, do make sure to look at planetary dignities. I will list them here, but I hope you can see that when it comes to conjunctions, there are a few extra points to consider. One more thing though, before we break things down by natal placement, uh, transit and synastry. What if two planets are conjunct, but they are in different signs? Ooh. For instance, you could have Venus at 28 degrees in your chart and Mercury at two degrees in the next sign over. Well, this is still a conjunction, right? But their point of view is going to be different, a lot different. So let's say, You've got Venus in Aries and then Mercury in Taurus. Well, Venus conjunct Mercury suggests a love for words, writing, singing, speaking, having quite a soothing voice or accent as well. Decent conversation uh, matters to someone with this conjunction. They can be social, engaging and quite kind with their words too, quite childlike and playful at times. But as Venus in Aries is fiery and quick to action within a relationship, Mercury in Taurus is much slower when arriving at conclusions and then also slower when it comes to discussions. And so this could manifest as someone who 
feels a deep desire to initiate, but will also take their time. They will think the next step through a bit more than if someone was to have both Venus and Mercury conjunct in Aries. However, this could also play out where there's a slowness, right? There's such a slowness where they take so long to decide on a financial decision, for instance, but before they know it, the opportunity is gone and they are kicking themselves because they didn't jump at the chance sooner. And in the case of different sign conjunctions, also remember critical degrees. I mean, you could have moon at 29 degrees and then Uranus at zero degrees in your chart. This conjunction can feel extra karmic or symbolic. More information though about critical degrees can be found in my video, how to read degrees in your birth chart. Even just drawing from a famous composer's chart, Hans Zimmer, 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 he has Venus in Libra at a late degree, and then he has Neptune in Scorpio at zero degrees. His compositions are ex extremely beautiful and emotional. They can bring you to tears. He has written film scores for Gladiator, The Lion King, The Dark Knight, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dune 1 and 2. I have definitely cried during Gladiator and also during The Lion King. <laughs> and so, yes, you can hear that Neptune and Scorpio in his creations, the depth, <laughs> the emotion. And of course, Venus rules creativity and art. So his Venus in Libra brings the beauty, the sound, the, the talent, um, the, the, the talents of symphony, I suppose. But Neptune brings the darker layers and themes, the depth, the raw emotion and feeling, the mystery. And that zero degree Neptune is quite strong. There are a few other factors to take into consideration, such as Cassimis and combustions. Both of these involve the sun, by the way. And also when planets are out of bounds, which I have not talked about before on the channel, but what we're going to do is we're going to explore the conjunction in the needle chart and then looking at a conjunction within transits and synastry just to keep things more simplified. I don't want to bombard you with information. All right, so let's take a look at the conjunction in the natal chart. The first thing here is we got to consider which planets are involved in the conjunction. Is it Sun conjunct Mars in your chart? Maybe it's Moon conjunct Uranus. Perhaps it's Venus conjunct Neptune, like me. <laughs> the planets involved matter because they show the energies we're dealing with. In the case of Sun and Mars, this conjunction would be about action and purpose. In the case of Moon and Uranus, this would be about your emotions and your unconventional views. And in the case of Venus and Neptune, this would be more about your creativity and your imagination. Naturally, there are many, many combinations, too many to discuss in this video, but I will act out an example so you can see a conjunction in action. In basic terms though, a conjunction in your natal chart is more about how that conjunction displays your personality and your life experiences. You will see the conjunction play out throughout your life. It's sort of like the natal placements you have, they're a part of you. They are a part of your story, a part of how you come across and interact with the world. However, the thing about a conjunction in your chart is that it can feel like it's too close to you, right? It's too close. As if it can be difficult to separate yourself from it. This is why it can be useful when others reflect to us what they see within the conjunction. They can view us from an outsider's perspective, hopefully providing us with greater clarity and self-awareness. On the other hand, what can also happen is denial, right? The denial and the dismissal of what others see in us. And in this way, it's almost like we become too wrapped up in a conjunction. It's too close to our nose, so it's hard to see other areas around it. Conjunctions can be quite self-absorbing. It's not to say though that they are bad because like anything in astrology, we can bring self-awareness to our actions, our attitudes, our behaviors, our choices. 
we can also own the parts of ourselves we deny. Still, the conjunction is strong. It's powerful. It impacts us in ways that other aspects do not. And when we work with any conjunctions in our chart, we can bring the two energies of the planets into a fused and holding position. Even do keep in mind that you could have like three planets conjunct or four planets conjunct. So things can become very, very strong. <laughs> there can be more than two planets involved when it comes to conjunctions, basically. They can be as well our greatest strength. Then again, they can also be a bit of a weakness. It all depends on the other factors I mentioned, such as planetary dignities, the signs the planets are in, having a day versus a night chart, if we're willing to put in the work. <laughs> Still, I do feel the need to mention that when it comes to potential weaknesses in our charts, this does not mean bad or negative. I will just use myself as an example. So Venus is conjunct Neptune in my chart and the strength and power of this conjunction is my ability to flow from a place of, you know, a stream of consciousness, a stream of consciousness when I write. But at the same time, Venus and Neptune are in Capricorn. And so I have to put in the work as well. I have had to put um, much work into the things that I'm talented at. And a weakness of mine with this conjunction is that I am very sensitive in relationships, this is a weakness because all logic can go out the window, possibly leaving me in a vulnerable position. But does this mean that me being sensitive is a bad thing? No. I can embrace my sensitive side whilst also recognizing when my sensitivity overpowers my logic and reason. Hi, so I have Venus conjunct Mars in my chart and the way I describe the way I may describe my relationships is that there are times whenever I can take the initiative, times whenever I can be direct, but there are also times when I let people come to me, right? When, when I'm more passive. And I also would say that I care a great deal about connecting with people and I do like to make the first move at times, but then I'm also aware of the other person or people involved and their actions and the way they present themselves. I value my independence. <laughs> I value my independence. I value my ability to choose, but I also equally value the connection. I wanna be able to relate and I want to show some type of enthusiasm and eagerness <laughs> when it comes to showing up within my relationships. I can show this ambitious energy and that I can be driven as well within relationships. But yes, at the same time, I also am aware that I have my own individual goals that I'm working on and that I enjoy, you know, that I, I really love to pour my heart and soul into my own passions. Moving on to conjunction transits. Okay, so if two or more uh, planets are conjunct by transit, this means that everybody in the world will see this appear somewhere in their chart. And when a conjunction occurs at the same degree and minute, a new cycle begins in your chart. This is where synodic cycles comes into play, which you can find more information about in my degrees video. Take the Pluto Venus conjunction and the Pluto Mars conjunction we experienced in the sign of Aquarius recently. These occurred during Aquarius season 2024. New cycles began between Pluto and Venus and between Pluto and Mars. Cycles which we have not seen in our lifetime. Why is this? Because the last time Pluto was in Aquarius for its full transit was about 200 years ago. So what did that Venus-Pluto conjunction usher in as an example here? Change and innovation when it came to our financial security for a start. But the types of changes that forced us to see what we have outgrown and how we seek to evolve 
cutting off dead weight, renewal, embarking on a new financial journey, a new financial path, a new self-worth path as well, no longer repeating the same unconscious habits within our relationships. Pluto was about digging much deeper, warning us that if we do not let go now, if we do not change something willingly, the change will most likely come unwillingly. But you see, there are other layers to conjunct transits. Your needle placements. When a transit planet conjuncts, conjuncts a needle placement in your chart, you are going to experience the conjunction way more personally. So let's so say, for instance, you're someone with Aquarius planets in your chart, especially personal planets, which are around zero to six degrees about that. Well, the Venus-Pluto conjunction, right, in Aquarius around the 17th of February, 2024, would have been way more personal for you. Maybe sun is in Aquarius at around those degrees in your chart. And so the conjunction felt like a push to reinvent yourself, or there were drastic changes to do with your purpose or your self-expression. Or if Mercury is in Aquarius at around those degrees, the conjunction was more about your mindset, was more about your ways of thinking. Now, the other aspects also come into play, but we are focusing on the conjunction in this video. Like anything in astrology, we must consider the bigger picture, the greater whole. Though something I want to mention about transit conjunctions is that when the same planet conjuncts your natal planet, this is known as a planetary return. When, for example, the transit sun returns to its natal position in your chart, this is your solar return. You experience this every year. This then is a new cycle. So do keep in mind planetary returns. Now, much like the natal conjunction, when a transit planet conjuncts a natal planet of yours, it can feel like the other planet is on top of you. It's engulfing you. It's personal, especially if it's a personal planet on another personal planet. The personal planets, just to remind you, are Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. You might find the other planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, um, to be not so uh, personal in this way, but you may still experience these uniquely depending on the planets involved. And when a transit planet conjuncts our natal planets, they activate parts of us, sort of bringing them online. <laughs> this can be an energetic and dynamic experience. I know for me, Moon is in Aries in the eighth house in my chart at 15 degrees and the North Node and Chiron have activated my Moon for the past while. And let me tell you, I am feeling it. My wounds being torn open, <laughs> addressing my pain, my unresolved traumas. Hi, so I've got Moon in Gemini and anytime Mercury is in Gemini, which is typically once a year, and it starts to conjunct my Moon in my chart, my mind is just so curious, so fascinated. I'm already the type of person where I'm, I'm continuously exploring new ideas and drawing connections and I can be quite social and chatty, especially whenever I'm in the mood. But with Mercury conjunct the moon, it's just as if my thoughts and my ideas are firing. There's so many thoughts. Now it can be, it can be overwhelming. That is true. It can be hard for me to slow down my thoughts and to perhaps recognize um, whenever I'm spiraling. And I can certainly struggle with overthinking at times. Some people do tell me that, that I'm too much of an overthinker. And I can also worry quite a bit as well, trying to work on that. But what I love about any time Mercury conjuncts my moon is just all of the, the creativity. It's almost like my brain comes alive, it, it comes online. <laughs> and I can see the patterns, I can see the connections so clearly and things click into place. I'm also pretty witty too. My comebacks for things are just on it. <laughs> I love it. It's fun, 
it's entertaining. Can it be a little bit overwhelming at times? Sure. But I try to remain lighthearted throughout it all. Lastly then, let's explore con conjunctions in synastry. What I mean by this is when a planet you have is around the same degree as someone else with that planet in the same sign. So let's say Mars is in Aries in your chart and your friend has Venus in Aries in their chart. Your Mars is, at about, is around about 10 degrees and theirs is about seven degrees. Your Mars and Venus would be conjunct, showing us something about the type of relationship you share, how you relate to one another. You could be on the same page when it comes to hyping each other up, encouraging each other. When the Mars in Aries person says, let's go on an, ad an adventure, the Venus and Aries person says, yes, let's do it, I'm all in. When the Venus and Aries person says, I value your independence, your fighting spirit, the Mars and Aries person says, thanks so much, now I drop and give me 10. <laughs> I'm joking. Basically, this is a mu mutual respect, right? There's a mutual respect here. There is a relatability. And due to this relatability, there's a connection. However, however, this is not to say that all things are just fine and dandy and wonderful when conjunctions like these happen. Because much like we have been saying, this can be too in your face, <laughs> too semi as well. Both parties can find the other to be intrusive. Let's say this is someone with moon in Libra at 14 degrees and the other person has Venus in Libra at 12 degrees. This couple, this pair might be highly agreeable to a fault. <laughs> it's like, well, what do you want to do? Well, what do you want to do? Back and forth, back and forth until somebody makes a decision, which is probably subtly done without trying to rock the boat. So on one hand, when you have planets that conjunct another person's planets, this can be exciting, fun, and enjoyable. You can relate, connect, you can feel seen as well. It's like a part of you is being reflected back to you and you enjoy it in a way. But on the other hand, matters can be dull and a bit boring <laughs> too, as if you're not challenging each other to grow. Now this could also depend on the signs and everything else. Or it can even feel like you're just way too similar, way too similar. But the other thing about this is that when it comes to people being similar, we might really enjoy their company. They're easy to talk to, they're easy to get along with. But there can also be times when we might not recognize just how similar we are to someone else. They could very well push our buttons as they present the same qualities we present. I have made videos about synastry and composite charts, so do make sure to check those videos out for more information on how to read yours. But essentially, conjunctions in synastry can be super helpful when it comes to seeing how you relate with others, seeing how well or not so well you get on with someone. Hi, I'm Mars in Virgo. I would say that I'm highly ambitious when it comes to my everyday tasks, responsibilities, duties that I have and I know what I like. I know how things go well together, right? How to be well organized. Everything has its place. These things matter to me. And since meeting my partner who has Jupiter in Virgo, my goodness, my partner has come into my life and has been so optimistic and positive about my abilities to get things together, get things moving along. I feel this inspiration from my Jupiter and Virgo partner and celebrate it actually. Times whenever I can clearly feel the, the rejoice, the praise coming from my partner, but I also want to say, uh, my partner can expand my own critical ways of doing things. I can get into my head a bit more. 
because it's almost like my partner makes it makes things way way bigger way bigger than what they need to be so i'm trying to learn how to understand my jupiter and virgo partner instead of us getting into these places of being super critical of each other hi i'm jupiter and virgo and i tend to find a lot of joy and happiness in the little things just doing my mundane tasks and responsibilities i feel kind of good about all that and whenever things are working well i'm happy i'm in good spirits and i also really enjoy teaching other people you know teaching them my ways of how to do things it gives me a lot of meaning i think and since meeting my mars in Virgo partner, oh my goodness, I'm just so proud of my partner, so happy, so happy that my partner has this drive, this ambition to get on with things. And yes, I would say that I can hype up my Mars and Virgo partner, and just as much, they encourage me, right? They, they help me feel driven and like I can do things. So I can feel that, that push from them just as much. But yes, we can also butt heads at times. There's times whenever I can really overthink and worry and stress out. Uh, but then there can also be times when my Mars and Virgo partner worries and stresses out, and then I worry and stress out, and then they worry and stress out, and it just gets into this huge stress ball, right? A stress ball that, is hard to stop on its tracks. So I think together we're trying to learn to minimize. <laughs> I know for myself, the things that I wanna work on, um, cause I'm all about improvement. If I learn something and I understand it, I wanna improve, right? I wanna upgrade. So from my perspective, I wanna try and see what I can practically do as a way to not get into these states of stress and worry um thinking about the little steps i can put in place to make all the difference okay then cosmic warriors so that concludes my video talking all about conjunctions in astrology please let me know if you find this video to be helpful did you learn something new i would really appreciate your feedback and like you i am always learning again thank you so so much to my patrons over at patreon for all of your support and do let me know your thoughts and your opinions on today's video in the comment section but with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you have not yet subscribed, then make sure that you click that subscribe button and also give this video a like if you did like it today. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye.